Hello everyone and welcome to the long-awaited, much-anticipated 96 Hammer tutorial. Where today we're going to be going over rivers for your maps. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and download the update to the water source texture pack that I have made. I will put a link down in the description below so you can download it. It will be on my site next to the tutorial as well for you to download. I'm going to be doing the tutorial in Source Engine 2009 for Half-Life Episode 2. I already have Hammer open with my map loaded. So inside the map right now, I just have water down here with a short little path for a river to travel down. Um, two rocks up here, another rock here, and then a small area to simulate rapids. Now we're going to be using some particle effects, which you can also find um, included in the water source texture pack. Uh, that I've whipped up. Some of them aren't the best, but I think that they work perfect for what we're doing. And also, you can fumble around in the editor a little bit. You can load that up with putting dash tools in the parameter. Also, the 100th tutorial will be on particle editor. So, just wait for that if you want to learn how to edit them. So, I have the game up in tools mode over here. We'll use that later, though. So, we're going to start off by creating the basic river. So, you're going to want to start with your no draw texture. And here is my river platform, again, um, the small little area where there's really no origin of the water, it's just going to spawn. So just go ahead and create a brush for your river, have it go to the end. Um, it doesn't really matter how fancy it is, I'm just going to use this because we're going to turn it into a displacement so we get it to, to flow right. But we do have this on an angle, so I am going to go ahead and lower my grid size. Align this to grid really quick. Grid to 4. I'm going to angle this up. And we'll be able to fine tune its settings in the paint, this uh, geometry window, or sculpt, whichever one you like better. So just angle this accordingly with the vertex tool. Apply that. That's about what we want. So now just go ahead and bring up the displacement tool. Create a displacement out of just the top face. So select it. Click create. Power of 4. Now power of 4 displacements will cause errors unless you check these three boxes. We want no physics, hull, or ray collision, meaning this will not collide with the player. There will be no hull collisions. I'm not going to go into detail what that is. And no ray collisions mean it will not cast shadows. So we want to make sure that all those are checked for this to work properly. Now, because a displacement aligns the texture to the vertices, we want to make sure that this is pretty evenly stretched out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our paint geometry tool. We're going to uh, lower the distance down to about 2. We're going to increase the radius on it. And we want to make sure that we uh, push it to the left or right, depending on what we need. So to do that, you can change the axis to Y is on the Y axis, but the one we want is X. So we just want to push this over here. Make sure that it doesn't clip too far into here. We don't want to waste any texture memory. Um, by having stuff not be rendered. So just kind of push this over. This is a little too high, so I want this to be lowered down a little bit in some areas. And because it's a river, it doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, flat like normal water. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this really quick how it needs to be. Okay, so this is a pretty general type of thing that you're going to create. Now make sure that, that all the edges meet up to the side here, because if they don't, you will you will not like how this looks. So you got to make sure that the displacement goes in to the world just a teeny tiny bit. 
Um, you won't notice too many flaws once again because the displacement is going to be moving. With more time, you'll be able to get something with better results, but this is pretty good for now. Now, you'll see on the no draw texture that it is stretched a little bit. So if you want to mess with that, you can manually move the vertices to make it look completely, uh, to make it look better, basically. Um, I don't have a lot of time for that, so I'm not going to bother with it too much. Now we're going to go ahead and apply our texture. Now there are two types of textures that I have included for you guys to use. We have the flat texture and the normal um, refracting texture. I'll show you how to use both. Both pretty simple, easy peasy. So you can just apply that and you'll see the uh, you'll see about the way that the current will travel um, in the reflection of the normal map. So you're gonna want to go ahead and rotate it accordingly, so it looks so it looks like it's gonna flow the right way. Um, and if it looks like it's flowing the wrong way when you get in game, just flip it around the other way. So now we have our basic river here. Now we can apply another texture on top of this, kind of like in CS Militia, for the water foam. I have included one of those, custom for you guys to use. So I'm just going to turn off my snap to grid, hold down shift, hit the up arrow once to create a copy of this displacement. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the water foam texture and apply it. Now this will look pretty messed up, that's okay. Just click fit and you'll get two numbers. Um, one will be smaller than the other, so copy the smaller number, paste it in the top one. This will make it align perfectly, and then justify it to the left or right. Does not really matter that much. And you'll get this nice, pretty side foam. Now again, with you moving the vertices left or right, you will be able to fine tune how this top part really looks on here. As you can see, when you move it, it does affect how it looks. So I'm just going to leave that on here pretty basic. For now, I'll, I'll touch up a little bit. All right, so that's about as high detail as I really want to get with that. Of course, you guys have more time. You'll be able to plot this out a little bit better, maybe think it through, not just rush through it. So now we have our basic river. Um, that, that actually does it for the rivers. That's it. But now if you want to do some more things to the river, make it look a little more real, We I have some rock models here. And if some of you guys have seen the preview images, there's um, particle effects that go along with this that we're also going to apply. So to view the particles, you just open up the game, go to the particle editor, you open the game in tools mode, tools, particle editor, file, and then open, it'll be thw underscore river.pcf, load this up, you'll get this one down here, the particle systems I created for you. Um, the first one we're going to use is rock splash, just this little splash particle effect goes splissy splashy for the rocks. So I'm just going to move this over here really quick to my second monitor. We're going to create an info particle system. We're going to start it as active, and its particle system name is going to be rock underscore splash underscore 01. And then we're just going to go ahead and rotate, rotate this in place, put it in front of the rock model where the rock would collide with the surface. All right, I'm going to take the same particle effect, I'm going to drop it on the other rock. Once again, where the rock meets uh, the surface. Okay, place that there. Now there's bigger rock up here, and with bigger rocks come bigger splashes. So on splash two, it's the same, pretty much the same effect, but with a much larger scale. So we're going to go ahead and place that on there as well. This one the same thing, it's rock splash two. Uh, it just says two at the end instead of a one. 
Uh, go ahead and rotate that into place. And of course, if any of the particle systems don't align how you want them to, you can always go ahead and change it in game. So now there's one, there's a couple more particle effects that we're going to go ahead and place. Um, in your rapids, if you have them, um, I'm going to go ahead and put our rapid particle effect. This one is just rapids 01 for the particle effect. Rapids 01, R E P I D S 01. And now, some of you have a waterfall that you might want to add, um, which is why I have this little waterfall area set up. Um, the, wall call, the waterfall particle is decent. Um, I'm sure you guys can do better if you mess around with it. But I have included a basic one for you guys to use. Um, if you need to change the height, you can just go ahead and change the lifespan of the particles to change that. But its name is CHW Waterfall 01. So I'll go ahead and I will apply that particle effect right now as well. And for this particle effect, you're going to place the info particle system about right here in relation to the top. I'm going to make it PHW underscore waterfall underscore 01. And now there's another particle effect that go, there's two more particle effects that go along with it. We have the top splash. It's a little more controlled particle that goes along at the top kind of does more splashing um, makes it look a little bit better so for this one you're going to put it a little more closer to the top and it's going to be waterfall top splash apply make sure all of these are start active because if they're not they won't turn on and that would be bad and just make sure of that And then there's one more that go along with this. We have the waterfall base particle system. It's just a base splash, has some splash effects with a like water spread type deal going on. So this one's gonna get placed at the bottom of your waterfall. And it's going to be waterfall underscore base underscore one. And now this one you're going to put it at the same height as your water put it back underneath your your top waterfall and then you're gonna hold alt which unsnaps it from the grid completely and you're just gonna move it up a teeny tiny bit because otherwise you'll get a render issue with your particle systems so that'll actually do it I'm gonna go ahead and compile this and you will see it in game All right, so here we are in game. We have the river flowing, looks pretty decent. We have the splash particle effect going on right there on the rock. Again, right there as well. Come up here to the rapids, and that's also there. And we have the big splash effect, rapids, uh, the refracting. Now, you notice when you jump, you're not actually in water. So after this, I'll show you guys how to apply the other type of river texture that I have along with how to make it actually seem like water. Now there's one thing to notice. Um, this particle here, this big particle is where you, where you will really notice it. Um, it'll pop in and out sometimes, like right there. There you go, get it to pop. So you'll notice that it's only rendering on this model texture behind it. That's because of how Source Engine handles displacements and the particle effects. There's no actual way to fix this on our end, so you just have to bear with it. You don't really notice it for the rapids. You really only notice it on these big particle effects that are in front of rocks, and that's about it. So you really don't have to worry about that much. Um, it happens with the other texture as well that I'm gonna show you guys, but it's not as noticeable. Um, if you look at the cold stream map from Left 4 Dead 2, which is where I got the inspiration for these particles, they have the same problem as well, so there's really nothing I can do to fix it because Valve had the same problem. I'll go over here to the waterfall. It goes up here. There's the one particle emitter to make the water at the top fall down. Just jump down here. And there's the waterfall itself. Looks pretty good. The bottom splash particle from where it splashes and putters out. 
And it's a lot less bright when HDR is off. I just compiled with HDR. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump out. And I will show you guys the other texture and how to make it actually water. Alright, so we're back in Hammer now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide the foam texture. I'm going to browse back to water source. And you'll see these flat textures here. You can just go ahead and grab one. Apply it to the top of the face. And it looks kind of like a river in itself. I'm just going to unhide my foam texture. And now I'm going to go ahead and create another water uh, water brush underneath it. So hold shift, hit up, and then hit down. And then destroy the displacement. It's just so we have a brush to work with because I'm lazy and I don't want to create a new one. Stretch it across to make it fit. Um, you might want to apply this as a no-draw texture so you know what you have. You want to make sure that this is underneath your entire river texture, display, your, your displacements. You want to make sure it's underneath. Um, go ahead and grab the vertex tool so it forms kind of like a wedge. And then grab the bottom vertices and pull them down. It needs to be deeper for the water to gracefully function. And just like nudge it down till it's underneath the river all the way it's close enough again when you guys have more time you will be able to do this better now I created a custom water texture that's just invisible it's water source water water in biz you can just go ahead and apply it to the top and it should work fine I'm actually gonna pull this up a little bit and then once it's there press control T make it an entity you want to make it a function water analog this will make it this is what source engine uses to tell that the water can actually move in the world like if you have rising water but essentially it forces it to be cheap water and it therefore will not interact or mess with your expensive water so you want to make sure that you make that that correct entity otherwise it won't work and it's invisible, so it doesn't cause stack issues with rendering. So I'm just going to go ahead and compile this. I'm not going to do HDR. But I'll compile this. And then I will show you guys what it looks like in game once again. Alright, so here we are in game again. We have the other water texture. It's not HDR anymore. Now, this is how they did the water, the river in... Cold stream. It's just a normal texture. It doesn't refract. In my opinion, it doesn't look as pretty, but everyone to their own. Again, when you get over here, because it's water funk analog, it's not going to mess with any of the rendering of our expensive water texture. Now, remember when doing this, they can only have one height of expensive water per potentially visible set. So that means you can only have one height of expensive water drawn at a time. That's why we have this cheap invisible water texture to add underneath so it functions properly. Now, I'm going to give myself a gun. And when you shoot it now, you get, you get water splashes. And you can even float in some places too. Um, but when you look underneath it, because I made it completely invisible, there will be no fog. So just be aware of that as well. But it's mainly there. So you get water splashes. And when you walk through it, you get the water sound and the water to do. Now I'll notice here the splash effect rendering issue isn't as noticeable because it still renders underneath the river itself. So, sorry for taking so long in this tutorial. I hope it helped you create rivers for your maps. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.